always my beat, from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. The February winds spin, dance, race in the morning avenue, and Broadway lurches in their wake, and hands are frozen to early editions of newspaper, and winter lies against cheek and mouth, and search the headlines for what the winds are taking to die with them. And search memory, too, for January images sworn to remembrance. Ice on masks of freighter bound for the tropics. And further back, deeper in memory, the holiday time and the holiday women. And they dance by now in chill embrace of winter wind. And solace is the corner coffee stand and the donut. And waiting a little way up the street, the time clock. Downtown, the new morning is emergency ward of police hospital, and the wall clock that jerks its hands into the eight o'clock time, and a man, Dr. Sinsky. Shock, exposure. For a whole night, the girl lay in an alley and no one to you. Over the phone, you said that. I know what I said, poison. There were symptoms. The lab confirmed my diagnosis just minutes ago. Pretty. Yes. Now that daddy's sleep, a prettiness has returned. Uh, here, Danny... Here's the history on her. Identified from things in her pocketbook as Peggy Warner, age 28. Where was she found? A moment, Danny. Alley emptying into 19th Street, back of Tate's Bar and Grill on Tate Avenue. Mm-hmm. A woman came running to patrolman Carnes on the beat, yelled a drunk girl was sleeping in the alley. and then... Poison, shock, exposure. What are her chances, Doctor? What do you want me to say, Danny? I gave her sleep for a little while. To give her back her life? What do you want me to say, Danny? And outside now, the morning is a wind wall, so adjust yourself to it. One hand in overcoat pocket, one hand on hat, lower the head. Short walk to squad car, and the drive downtown. Crowd going to work time, rush beneath long triangles of gray and splinters of sunshine. Uncadenced quick step of pedestrian, and blare of the car born, taking turns according to the green light and the red. Left on 3rd Avenue and cruise for an address. Tate's Bar. Find it. Park. And Tate's Bar is five booths, four empty, ten bar stools, half of them occupied. And the bartender flashes his nine o'clock in the morning smile at you, takes it back at the flash of the badge, assures you his name is Tate, and assures you... My time is yours. Just a few questions about last night, Mr. Tate. Last night was different. There was a girl lying in the alley out back. Her name was Peggy Warner. Is Miss Warner in the habit of... Look around you for a minute. So? You just bear with me. Peggy Warner, Mr. You just bear with me. We'll come to Peggy. This place of mine, this bar, a convenience. I cater to those who demand their booze. Me, personally, I wouldn't be caught even with my nose to a cork for the aroma. What's this got to do with... I'm going to tell you why I fired her. Go on. So there are those who booze it from early morning on. I cater to this necessity. Notice the place, clean. The jukebox music, adjusted to soft tone level. The customers, voice is low. This I demand. Talk becomes above library level. Into the gutter they must go. Now we will consider Peggy. Thank you. So you'll understand. I said thank you. Eight months ago, I got a whim. Hire a barmaid. I approve of women waiting on men. Dames, I don't allow in here to drink, but to wait on in uniform and all. I have a whim where this is nice for the self-respect of those who like the bottle. I hired Peggy. Eight months ago. About that. Then I caught her drinking with a customer. Two days after she started to work here, I bounced her. What about last night? She came back looking for a job. She looked like she just swam her way to the top of a beer crock. Out the back way, she did go on my arm. No job for me to her. I see. What else can you tell me about her? Eight months ago, when I fired her first... Yeah, maybe you'd like to know about that. About what? The customer who she drank with. She merely walked around to his end of the bar, went out with him hand in hand. And? Well, the guy's name was... I'll get it for you. His address, too. I got around here someplace. Whatever this guy's name was, I saw him the next morning at his house. Oh? Yeah. Next morning, I got a messenger with a $10 bill and a note from Peggy. Bring my dress and street shoes around to this address. I did. The man I mentioned opened the door for me, took the bundle, and slammed the door in my face. Sure, I'll get his name and address for you.
Yes? What do you want? I'm from the police, Danny Clover. And please I, be uh... brief. You've chosen a very bad time. A woman's morning is quite crowded enough without... Charles Blake live here? Charles Blake, I was given this address. Charles is my husband. Well, do I have to stand out here and discuss it, whatever you... No, Mrs. Blake. Well, then let's go inside. I'm chilled to the bone. Here in the hall will do. Just let me warm myself at the register a moment. Ooh. Now, what's this about Charles? I want to talk to him. Where is he? In his office, maybe. Out with one of his clients, maybe. What do police have to do with Charles? A girl was found in an alley early this morning. Oh, there you go again. I've read how you people do things. Make it sound big. Toy with it. Act smart and fresh and knowing. You'll let me finish, Mrs. Blake? What alley? What girl? Some girl Charles is supposed to know? Something you found in an alley and right away... What girl? Peggy Warner. Girl, your husband. Oh, Peggy. That one? <laughs> Funny, Mrs. Blake? Yeah, I just like a girl like that. Where else but in an alley? Strikes me funny I was so right about her. Do you mind? What else did you feel about her, Mrs. Blake? That she had a fresh mouth and she was sloppy and lazy and had to be yelled at to make her do things. She was our maid, you know. I didn't know. Oh, yes. Charles brought her home one evening and said to me, standing right there, he said to me, he said, Martha, I've brought you that maid you've always wanted. And Tom... Tom. Tom, my son. Tom said, you've always wanted one, Mother. Let's try it for a while. And I thought about it and I said, all right. All right, Charles. All right, son, if you both think we need one. And was she drunk when you people found her? She was poisoned. She's dying. And I tried it. For two weeks, I really tried it, honestly, but I, I just couldn't bear her anymore. Sloppy and just fresh-mouthed, and we paid her off and dismissed her and... Oh, excuse me. Hello? Yes, Tom. Where are you? Oh, no. No, I don't think so. I'd rather you didn't... Not here. You tell your father... Not now, Tom. You and your father are not to... Now, you listen to me. Your son, Mrs. Blake? Just a minute, Tom. Yes, it's my son. Do you mind waiting... And he's I... with his father? Why, why, yes. He's with Charles, and I don't see any need for them to traipse all the way up here from downtown. Just... You're right, Mrs. Blake. As long as they're downtown, just tell them to drop in at headquarters right away. Ask for me. Now, go on. Tell him, Mrs. Blake. Tom? Yes, there's someone with me. A Mr. Clover from the police. He wants you and your father to go to police headquarters right away. Well, I, I don't know, son. I don't know. I'll tell him. Son? Tom? He hung up. They'll be there? Yes. Miss Clover? Yes? That girl. It's all she was, what I told you. It's all she deserves. <laughs> Uh, just sit down, gentlemen. What's this all about? What are my father and I doing in a police station? Pop, I told Take you... Take it easy, son. Mr. Clover must have a reason. What do you do for a living, Mr. Blake? I'm a tax consultant. What about you? I used to help out my father. I'm on my own now. And he's very good, Mr. Clover. Look, Mr. Clover, my father and I were on our way home. Either one of you know a girl named Peggy Warner? Come now, Mr. Clover, surely you asked my wife the same question, and surely she told you that Peggy once worked for us. Tell me about her. Of course. She worked for us. Maid. She was unsatisfactory as a worker. She was fired. Who fired her? I don't remember who fired her, Tom. What is all this? A maid waved a dust mop around she our house. She was found and... in an alley, poisoned. Suicide? Well, for one thing, she's not dead yet. For another... I still don't get this at all. We haven't seen Peggy since last summer sometime. July, around then. That go for you too, Mr. Blake? Of course. Now, tell me about how you first met her, Mr. Blake. How do you know it was I? Who... About Tate's bar. Tell me about that. I'll be glad to. My office was nearby. I stopped in for a quick one at Tate's bar. Peggy waited on me. I drank to her health. She told me she wished she could drink to mine. I bought her a drink. She drank it. Her boss saw her, fired her. And you figured it was your responsibility to take care of her, is that it? Uh, not to take care of her, to see that she got located again. Listen, you... My mother had been screaming for a maid, so my father brought her one. Peggy was a lousy maid, that's all. And I'll tell you something else. My mother didn't like the way she took too long to clean up my room. That make you happy? No sense making up lies, Tom. There's nothing... Who's to... lying? 
I see. Well, that's about it, Mr. Clover, all we can tell you honestly. Now, my son and I were having a beer together. My wife is expecting us. She'll worry. Sure, go home. If, if I need you, you'll be there, won't you? Of course, but why should you need us anymore? Let's get out of here, Pop. And son walks away from it. Opens door for father. Grins. You want to make a production out of it, Pop? Let's get out of here. Come on, Pop. The man said... Pop, you listening? For a little while longer, the father sits in silence, then rises, walks past the boy into corridor without waiting, without a word to him. And boy winks at me and closes door. And through window, morning drifts the streets, and chill is grayer now. And over a doorway, neon sparks, sputters, flows in twisted tube. A man looks up, enters, and brief flurry of wind people on Winter Street. Danny? Danny? Hmm? Come on in, Doctor. I've just come up from emergency ward checking my patients. Uh, that girl this morning. Peggy Warner? Yeah, her too. Well, what about her, Doctor? This about her. The question you asked of me this morning? What question? You said, what chances, Doctor? I didn't have an answer for you then. Now I have. Now there's nothing to ask anymore. She's dead. Peggy Warner is dead. When you look through your window, what do you see, Danny? Tell me. Tell me about it. You are listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. You've heard about the devastation spread in Holland by the hurricane. No doubt it touched your heart, in common with all Americans. And if you've been wondering what you can do to help these brave people in their hour of desperate need, please listen. The State Department and the Executive Office of the President suggest that you send immediately a check to CARE, C-A-R-E, CARE, New York. Holland's greatest need is for blankets. CARE can send more faster with your dollars. To relieve an immediate pressing need, make your relief money for Holland go farthest by sending your check to CARE, New York. <laughs> When it begins, when the February part of winter comes around, there's a kind of joy on Broadway. The time is starting to end. Peek under the calendar page and know that spring will come again. And the smile you make makes a little warm inside. But there'll be the winter things to remember. The evenings, just as nighttime drifted in, when lights danced their patterns just for you. And later, when you made the stars do things just for her. And winter park, snow in black tumbled hair... And Hudson Dawn fingers against cool curve of cheek and laughter. It's starting to end, but there's still time. Run after it. Hurry. And the rush of new morning at police headquarters, the way it happens always, but with minor variations according to the vagaries of Sergeant Gino Tartaglia. Money. Money. Gino? Take a handful of peanuts, Danny, and sing along. Go ahead, take. Uh, thanks, you know, I'll save them for later. I saw Mrs. Tartaglia put them in my lunch box, and I couldn't wait. And three peanut butter sandwiches... Like peanuts, huh? <laughs> What's the matter? What a question. It's like asking a fellow if he likes gherkins. What? A question. Gino, do you have anything for me? Indeed I do. You let me have it, please. Some questions. Like asking a so fellow... So help me, Gino. <clears throat> uh, very well, Danny. A check into the background of Miss Peggy Warner, deceased. Nothing on the blotter at records. So far as we can tell, Miss Warner was a law-abiding citizen. However... However what? A hurry-up wire to Baltimore, to the Social Security office, and a relay to the folk down there of Miss Warner's Social Security number taken from her effects reveal the following. Go on. Miss Warner was a bad employment risk for some reason or another. A list of places where she worked for the last eight months is this long. Here, Danny. You can see for yourself. Mm. After the bar job, she was employed as a read, waitress in the village tea shop. Then as an elevator operator at a fancy dress shop on Park. And Gino. Then... Uh, yes, Danny? I can read. Oh. Yeah. Thank you very much, Gino. You were good today. Very good. Tell Mrs. Tartaglia. <laughs>
There'll be a very small wait for a table, sir, so if you'll just give me your name. Danny Clover. Danny Clover, with one L, of course. You see? There you are in big block letters on my pad, right under Mrs. Trafer and party of three. And if you'll nuzzle among those others on the bench, we'll have you teed and fed in just the smallest time. I'm not eating. And then we'll put you with someone who is. And if you're fortunate, you'll get a fat one who's dieting, and you can have her blue plate dessert with your tea. I'm from the police. You're a police? It's about Peggy Warner, a girl who used to work here. That one. Mm hmm But she died today. It's all over the noon editions. A little while ago, I had a midday snack over it in the kitchen with the salad boy. Look, uh... An August girl, that one. And you know August girls. No, tell me. You don't know how odd like this they are. They blow in with the August wind, always at evening. Ask for a job or given it, and first thing you know, the season hits them. And there's nothing to do but sack them, fire them, give them the boot, the old heave-ho. Weather affects their work? You really don't know, do you? This uh, Peggy, this August thing, was doing very well on table. So well, in fact, I put her on tea leaves. Huh? Fortunes, of course. The extra charge is minute, and the men seemed to like it when it was Peggy at the leaves. But when she made their futures all come true, went out with them on the side, dated them at odd hours, what else is a person to do, I ask? The heave ho, huh? Your compassion is so welcome. Oh, pardon. Mrs. Trafer, we're ready for you. That table near the fireplace. Peggy Warner, is that the name? That's right. She worked here in this dress shop, didn't she? Why? What about her? What about her is that she's dead. Why is because I'm a policeman and I'm asking. Miss Warner worked here. She ran the elevator. I was floor manager in the college shop at the time. I remember her. I'm glad you do, because I want you to tell me about her. <laughs> there are only three floors here. There's not much to tell. She lasted three weeks here, Mr. Austin. How come such a short time? She's dead. That's right. And there's an investigation. That's right. Murdered? We're pretty sure of it. I see. She nearly cost me my job. That's why I signed the complaint slip against her for personnel. It was on my account she was discharged. I know. That's why the manager of this place sent me to you for a fuller explanation. Sometimes cheapness attracts a man, I'm sorry to say. You? I took her out a few times, three beers and a second-run movie each time. And goodbyes each time, not good night. I didn't like myself. So you had her fired? I couldn't stand her around. I'm thinking of marrying a lovely girl who... Well, I had to get rid of Peggy. I did. Now she's dead. Now I can stop looking for her. And leave him. And to other places where a girl, now dead, had worked, had been fired, had made other brief impressions. A charrette in a theater on West 125th Street. Handled uniform and flashlight real clever until one day showed an early matinee movie lover to a loge seat. Sat down in the empty one next to him right through second feature, newsreel, animated cartoon. Candy intermission also while the lights were up. Also laughed loud through very sad passages. Fired. Turned in flashlight and uniform. And a five and dime on East 26th Street. Long changed several men customers till one day she did it to lady store detective. Laughed right in her face. Fired. And the home insulating firm where Peggy Warner had been hired as house-to-house -house canvasser had made a house call. After an hour, phoned the home office, said she thought she needed a vacation. Our canvassers work on a volume basis. Fired. The life work, the employment rundown on Peggy Warner. And forget the rest of the list. Go back to headquarters. And a man in your office waiting for you. You been hustling, Danny? Gino said you've been waiting. He said Detective Mugovan had something for me. You got something, Mugovan? I've been making a routine rundown on Charles Blake... Figure maybe I could save you some legwork. Oh, well, tell me. Charles Blake, you remember the big hearted fellow meets a girl, buys her a drink, gives her a job in his own home, a maid for the wife and kid? I remember. What about him? Well, Charles has been separated from his wife six months now. A stunner, huh? Go on. Uh, he hasn't lived in his home. Kindly folk, neighbors, clients, very glad to cooperate with you boys of the police department, that type. They told me. Told me other things. And you'll tell me, huh? <laughs> it's what I knew you'd ask, Danny. Yeah. They told me uh, how Charlie Blake didn't deserve a nice home like this, a nice wife, how Charlie was a chaser, also a hunter. All right, he hasn't been in his home for six months. You find out where he has been? 
Uh, you got that list our tag they gave you? Places where Peggy Warner worked? Yeah. Uh, give it to oh, me. Oh, look, right? Muggerman, I've been through the list. Oh, I just know. give it to me, huh? Thanks. Now, uh, come over here to the wall map, Danny, a map of the city. I've been circling some spots on it while I waited. Uh, here, 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 here. Well, what about it? Uh, places where Charles Blake has opened a tax consultant office in the last six months. Sometimes with living quarters, sometimes a rented room right in the neighborhood. A wanderer, huh, Danny? Yeah. And now check these against the addresses of places where Peggy Warner worked. Uh, here, West 125th Street. Charlie's office here. Hmm. Uh, this one, Mrs. Teamy's Tea Shop. Charlie here. Uh, Bank Street in the Village. Charlie's office on Bank. Uh, this one. Get a squad car, huh, Muggerman? That's why I waited, Danny, so you'd tell me to do that. What do you want here, Clover? Talk. Let's go inside. You're busting up a family evening. Why don't you come back Who some other time? Who is it, Tom? Tom? Okay, we go inside. Who, who... Oh. Hello, Mr. Clover. Good evening. Something you want, Mr. Clover? Where's your husband? Pop? What do you want with Pop? Where is he? Mother. Get him. He's upstairs. Still about that girl, Mr. Clover? That's right. I don't understand what gives you the right to come here, into our home, order people to do things Mrs. that they... Mrs. Blake, you're an intelligent woman. This has got murder in it. It's not a matter of ordering people. It's a matter of getting things done. Right now, all that has to be done is to talk to you and your husband and your son. And then what? We'll know who killed Peggy Warner. I'll tell you something, Mr. Clover. I'm beginning to get the impression that you're a ridiculous man. What do you want, Clover? I'm sure your son just told you it's still about Peggy. Oh, he's hinting, Charles. Hinting around that you, me, Tom, one of us had something to do with that girl's death. How does it feel to be back home, Mr. Blake? Tell him. It feels... I'll tell you how it feels. Look, Pop. Leave your father alone. I just want him to watch out what he's saying, that's all. I'm glad I'm home, Clover, that's all. And I'm glad he's home. What about you, Tom? you kidding? He's my father. Is it just a coincidence that your father came home after the paper screamed a girl named Peggy Warner was found dying in an alley? You've been nosing around, haven't you? Which one of you poisoned her? All right, then we'll go on. You brought Peggy into your house, Mr. Blake. Then she was discharged. Then you kept following. Set up your place of business close by her. Wherever she all went, right, you... All right, all right. Listen. What? It happens, that's all. So it happened to my father. But you threw him out of the house when it happened, didn't you, Mrs. Blake? He's back now. It's over. The girl is dead. My husband suffered. I suffered. And my son. We'll be a stronger family for it. Did you kill her, Mrs. Blake? Tom? Mr. Blake? What makes you so sure one of us killed her? You, because you couldn't get her out of your blood. She wrecked your family. She was wrecking your life. Tom? All right. She was... You know what kind of a girl she was. I knew. I knew the second day she was in. Shut up! Oh, sure, Pop. Go get angry. That's an emotion, too. You can have it. Sure, I had a motive for killing Peggy. What she was doing to you. Your motive, too, Mrs. Blake. Yes. Tom. Yeah? Whose idea was it for your father to come home? What difference does it make? It's important Tom. that... I'm... You killed her, Tom. Listen, Pop. What you have to kill her for? All right, she was what you said she was. But you don't know. You don't know. Let me tell you something, father of mine. I know. I know plenty. I know when a man makes a fool out of himself. I've seen fools, but you... Oh. My two men. Father, son. Charles. I'm sorry I hit you, son. It's Okay. Charles, I'm trying to tell you something. I'm sorry about everything, Martha. I know, I know. I'm sorry, too. Now, pay attention to me, both of you. I killed that girl. Martha. I followed you and found out where she lived. Then I went there night before last, and I brought a bottle with me. Heart-to-heart -heart talk with whiskey. And it was poisoned whiskey. I killed her. 
Then I told Tom it was all right to bring you home. Why don't you slap him again, Charles? Hit your son, or me, for what you've done to us. We'd better go, Mrs. Blake. One more minute, Mr. Clover. I deserve that. I'm a woman who's kept a family together. Charles. What? I spoke with her first. She laughed at you. Live with that, Charles. In the minutes before dawn, Broadway lies huddled in a dreamless sleep. It's the time of no stars and the silent wind. But walk the streets, take the slow walk, and listen. It's there. It's always there. The sound of weeping. And you know that nighttime will never leave. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway. My beat. Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover, with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia and Jack Crucian as Mugovan. The program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. In tonight's story, Irene Tedrow was heard as Martha, Herb Butterfield as Charles, and Sam Edwards as Tom. Featured in the cast were Marvin Miller and Peggy Weber. Bill Anders speaking. A tiny island paradise off the African coast, covered with colored tropical fruit and vegetation, Inhabited by brilliantly plumed tropical birds becomes a scene of fear and violence in tonight's episode of Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. A man, his wife, and the son they dote on are enveloped by strange events indeed until Tarzan decides to investigate. Don't miss Tarzan on most of these same CBS radio stations. Stay tuned now for the Vaughn Monroe Show, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. And remember, where there's gun smoke, there's Western Adventures, Saturday nights on the CBS Radio Network.